so fun. Hi friends, I'm back. So lots of people sent me pictures and videos showing me how much they loved me reading to them. So I decided I'm gonna read to you some more. So today we're gonna read Chicka Chicka Boom Boom, cause we love a classic, we do. And then we're gonna read one of my favorite books which is called And Tango Makes Three. So first, Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. Chicka Chicka Boom Boom by Bill Martin Jr. and John Archambault, illustrated by Lois Elhert. A told B and B told C, I'll meet you at the top of the coconut tree. Wee said D to E F G, I'll beat you to the top of the coconut tree. Chicka chicka boom boom, will there be enough room? Here comes H up the coconut tree. And I and J and tag along K, all on their way up the coconut tree. Chicka chicka boom boom, will there be enough room? Look who's coming, L M N O P and Q R S and T U V. Still more W and X, Y, Z. The whole alphabet up the, oh no. Look, the tree is bent way over. Chicka, chicka, boom, boom. All of the alphabet fell out of the tree, huh? Skit, scat, scoodle, doot, flip, flop, flee. I always think that part's funny. Everybody running to the coconut tree. Mamas and papas and uncles and aunts hug their little dears and dust their pants. Help us up, cry A, B, C. A, B, C. Next from the pile up, skinned knee D and stub toe E and patched up F. Then comes G all out of breath. H is tangled up with I, J and K are about to cry. L is knotted like a tie. M is looped and N is stooped and O is twisted, alley-oop. Skit, scat, scoodle, doot, flip, flop, flee. Look who's coming, it's black-eyed P, Q, R, S and loose tooth T. Then UVW wiggle free. Last to come XYZ as the sun goes down on the coconut tree. Do you think they learned their lesson that they shouldn't all climb up the tree? I don't know. But chicka chicka boom boom. Look, there's a full moon. When there's a full moon, it's brighter outside at night. A is out of bed and this is what he said. Dare, double dare, you can't catch me. I'll beat you to the top of the coconut tree. Chicka, chicka, boom, boom. And we got all the letters. You know what I like to do with the alphabet when I sing the alphabet is I like to use sign language at the same time. Do you think we should do that together? Okay, ready, we go. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? And then this is how you clap in sign language. So we go, yay! Woohoo! Are you ready for our next book? Okay, this book I really like because it's based on something that actually happened. It's a story of something that happened right here in New York City at a zoo in New York City called the Central Park Zoo. So you ready? This is called And Tango Makes Three by Justin Richardson and Peter Parnell, illustrated by Henry Cole. Look at this is a, what the Central Park Zoo looks like. Isn't it very pretty? In the middle of New York City, there is a great big park called Central Park. Children love to play there. It has a toy boat pond where they can sail their boats. It has a carousel to ride on in the summer and an ice rink to skate on in the winter. Best of all, it has its very own zoo. Every day, families of all kinds go there to visit the animals that live there. I really like going to the Central Park Zoo. It's a lot of fun. But 
The children and their parents aren't the only families at the zoo. The animals make families of their own. There are red panda bear families with mothers and fathers and furry red panda bear cubs. There are monkey dads and monkey moms raising noisy monkey babies. Is that what you are? Are you a noisy monkey baby? I always tell kids they're being noisy monkeys. And there are toad families and toucan families and cotton top tamarind families too. You know what I really like? I really, really like the red panda bears. I think they are so cute, the red panda bears. If you want to, you should ask your parents to look at pictures of red panda bears after this story because they're very cute. And in the penguin house, there are penguin families. Every year at the same time, the girl penguins start noticing the boy penguins and the boy penguins start noticing the girls. When the right girl and the right boy find each other, they become a couple. Two penguins in the penguin house were a little different. One was named Roy and the other was named Silo. Roy and Silo were both boys, but they did everything together. They bowed to each other, they walked together, they sang to each other, and they swam together. Wherever Roy went, Silo went too. They didn't spend much time with the girl penguins, and the girl penguins didn't spend much time with them. Instead, Roy and Silo wound their necks around each other. Their keeper, Mr. Gramsci, noticed the two penguins and thought to himself, they must be in love. Isn't that so nice? Roy and Silo watched how the other penguins made a home, so they built a nest of stones for themselves. Every night, Roy and Silo slept there, just like the other penguin couples. Because they're a penguin couple too, and look how cute they are. They're so happy. And every morning, Roy and Silo woke up together. But one day, Roy and Silo saw that the other couples could do something that they could not. The mama penguin would lay an egg, and she and the papa penguin would take turns keeping the egg warm until finally it would hatch and they would have a baby penguin. So that's all the mamas and the, the daddies, and then there's Roy and Silo, and they don't have a baby. Roy and Silo had no egg to sit on and keep warm. They had no baby chick to feed and cuddle and love, and their nest was nice, but it was a little empty. One day, Roy found something that looked like what the other penguins were hatching and he brought it to their nest. It was only a rock, but Silo carefully sat on it and sat and sat. When Silo got sleepy, he slept. And when Silo was done sleeping and sitting, he swam and Roy sat. Day after day, Silo and Roy sat on the rock, but nothing happened. But they wanted a baby, so they tried to make one with a rock. Then, Mr. Gramsci got an idea. He found an egg that needed to be cared for, and he brought it to Roy and Silo's nest. Roy and Silo knew just what to do. They moved the egg to the center of their nest. Every day they turned it, so each side stayed warm. Some days Roy sat while Silo went for food. Other days it was Silo's turn to take care of their egg. They sat in the morning and they sat at night. They sat through lunchtime and swim time and supper. They sat at the beginning of the month and they sat at the end of the month and they sat all of the days in between. They took very good care of their egg, huh? Until one day, they heard a sound coming from inside of their egg. Peep, 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 it said. Roy and Silo called back, squawk, squawk. Peep, peep, answered the egg. You see, it's cracking out of its shell there. Look at that little baby egg. Suddenly, a tiny hole appeared in the egg's shell. And then, oh, look at that little baby. What happened? Oh, crack! Crack! Out came their very own baby. She had fuzzy white feathers and a funny black beak. Now Roy and Silo were fathers. We'll call her Tango, Mr. Gramsci decided, because it takes two to make a tango. Roy and Silo taught Tango how to sing for them when she was hungry. They fed her food from their beaks. They snuggled her in their nest at night. Tango was the very first penguin at the zoo to have two daddies. 
Soon, Tango grew strong enough to leave the nest. Roy and Silo took her for a swim, just like all the other penguin families. And all the children who came to the zoo could see Tango and her two fathers playing in the penguin house with all the other penguins. Hooray, Roy! Hooray, Silo! Welcome, Tango! They cheered. And at night, the three penguins returned to their nest, where they snuggled together like all the other penguins in the penguin house and all the other animals in the zoo and all the families in the big city around them, and they went to sleep. It's like when you cuddle with your parents at night, right? So there's a little bit in the back of this book that tells you about the story that this is based on. So I'm gonna read that to you too, okay? It says, all of the events in this story are true. Roy and Silo are called chinstrap penguins because of their delicate line of black feathers that loops under their beaks as if to hold a hat in place. After years of living side by side in the Central Park Zoo, they discovered each other in 1998, and they have been a couple ever since. Tango, their only chick, was born from an egg laid by another penguin couple named Betty and Porky. That couple had often hatched their own eggs, but they had never been able to care for more than one at a time. In 2000, when Betty laid two fertile eggs, Rob Granzi decided to give Roy, Silo, and one of those eggs a chance to become a family. If you go to the Central Park Zoo, you can see Tango and her parents splashing about in the penguin house, along with their friends Nipper, Squawk, Charlie, Wasabi, and Pee Wee. There are 42 chinstrap penguins in the Central Park Zoo, and over 10 million chinstraps in the world. But there's only one Tango. Just like there's only one you. I like that book a lot. Okay, so. Those were our two books for today. I really hope you liked them. Those are two more of some of my favorite books and I'm very excited that I got to share them with you. Now that we're done, I'm just gonna remind you that everything is gonna be okay, even though things are a little weird and different right now. All right? I promise we're gonna make it through this. Also, be nice to your parents, okay? They're doing their best and so are you. And give some extra hugs when you can, all right? And I'll see you soon, okay? Bye!